Tonight on Joy News Prime, Ghana security agencies are on red alert following increased terrorist attack on neighboring countries and other West African coastal states in the last 48 hours. Challenges of food shortages in some senior high schools may end soon. This follows the Ministry of Education's plan to supply some schools with food tomorrow. Food shortages and potential food shortages in most of the schools. I mean, if you read the press that was issued by Charles Apawe chapter, clearly they, they cited uh, a potential food shortage. Mm -hmm. We'll engage Charles on this developing issue. Also, residents of Umbisi in the Bolsa South District of the Upper East Region protest the bad nature of the Chuchuliga Fumbisi Road here on Join News Prime. Coming up in the We will buy a car in less than one year, the car will go contempt. All because of the road. You can see that I am deformed. I had an accident there. Our plea is that we want Mr. President to fix our road now. And coming up in business. Mining giant Anglo Ashanti launches 10-year development plan for Obuase and adjoining communities. I'm also hopeful for the future because we have a plan for continuing the good work in a structured and well thought through program through the 10-year socioeconomic development plan. And coming up later in sports. The Minister for Youth and Sports, Mustafa Yusuf, has assured the Black Princesses of maximum support from the government ahead of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup, which takes place in Costa Rica next. Details of all these stories and more here in the holiday edition of Join News Prime. This is the home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Stay with us for details. <music> News Prime Headlines was brought to you by Belkans, refreshing style, taste of adventure. Hello again, thanks for choosing us. Now, some residents of Fumbisi in the Bosa South District of the Upper East Region have embarked on a demonstration to draw government's attention to the bad nature of the Chuchuliga Fumbisi Road. Although the road is currently under construction, the residents are unhappy about the slow pace of work and complain that certain portions of the road have become death traps. Here's a report by correspondent Albert Sorry. Dozens of residents thronged the streets of Fumbisi, marching to protest the delay in the completion of construction of the road linking Chuchuga and Sandema in the Busa North to Fumbisi in the Busa South District. The residents raised placards with various inscriptions to register their grievances about the road to the government. Some of them spoke to join us. Demonstrators were led by the presiding member of the Busa South District Assembly, John Apabe, to submit a petition to the district chief executive for onward submission to the president. We, the citizens of Bulu, do humbly petition your high office as follows: that the Chichuliga Sandema Viaga Bedema from Bisi Road is still in a bad state since I ordered it to my 10 construction company in 2016 that was supposed to have been completed in 2019. The state of the road affects food production in the two districts 
as we have been noted to be the baskets of food for Ghana, as we are champion as rice producers in Ghana here. Essential service providers such as medical doctors, nurses, teachers and other professionals constantly refuse potings to the municipal and district assemblies of Busan North and South respectively due to the bad nature of the road. The delay in fixing the road has caused low patronage in the Fumbisi and Sandeva markets due to the lack of interest of drivers to ply their commercial vehicles on this road. Do we not deserve good roads as buses? We do. We do. Better. Better roads. Are buses not Ghanaians? We are Ghanaians. We vote. Are we not part of citizens you swore and ought to protect their lives and properties? We are. We are. Receiving the petition, Busa South District Chief Executive Daniel Gariba explained the cause of the delay in the construction of the road. The road was uh, commissioned or sword was cut in the year 2016 by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Last week, Monday, we had a meeting at Sandema in which the contractor was present and he was very clear. He said the sort that your mama cut was for the construction of the road from Nafrongo to Juga Nako. And that this stretch that we are talking of was given to him in the year 2020. The work has been done and I can guarantee that this work will be done to satisfy all of us. He promised to forward the petition from the aggrieved from BC residents to President Nana Ekufuado. Meanwhile, joy news checks on the Chuchuluga Sandema from BC Road showed that some portions had been tarred while others had been recently bulldozed to make them more trouble. Construction equipment belonging to the construction firm My Ten, earlier mentioned by the district chief executive, were also seen working on some portions of the road. There were also some other portions of the road, especially between Wiaga and Fumbisi, which were still in bad shape. The residents want government to do whatever is necessary to speed up the construction of the road. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Fumbisi. Let's turn our attention to education now and challenges of food shortages in some senior high schools may end soon. This follows the Ministry of Education's plan to supply some schools food tomorrow. Food shortage has hit senior high schools across the country with the Upper West Regional Chapter of the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS, warning that students and parents may soon be compelled to take up the cost of feeding if government fails to provide supplies. In a letter to the Regional Director of Education, uh, CHAS noted that food supplies uh, con contacted or contracted by the buffer stock company as well as local suppliers contracted to help out are all refusing to do so citing non-payment of outstanding monies owed them by government. The public relations officer of the Ministry of Education, Kwesi Kwatin, indicated that the full supplies will be available by July 12. Well, there has been reports of food shortages and potential food shortages in most of the schools. I mean, if you read the press that was issued by Chad, a power chapter, clearly they, they cited uh, a potential food shortage. Mm -hmm. And based on that, the Minister for Education has to act and uh, intervene. And as I speak with you, arrangements have been far advanced for suppliers to, to, to supply foods to avert a potential food shortage mm. uh, within the region and some schools that may have. Mm. So yes, we, we do admit there could be challenges. Sometimes it may not necessarily be even even delayed in payment. A lot of time you may have uh, some uh, logistical constraints like storage facilities being out the food. But like yes, we, we do admit that it has more to do with the delays of the payment and the suppliers not having the, the power or the capacity to be able to uh, uh, supply again the future. Mm. But this is being worked on. But as of now, those
tools that uh, uh, give a caution of potential uh, strategies. We are addressing them little by little. We, we should see who's in those groups. I mean, I've always insisted that our mandate is to embrace challenges and solve it. We are not there because there will not be any challenges. So I recall, I think it was last, this last Wednesday, where the Minister for Education met with the suppliers in Ghana. And then we, we admitted that, yes, when it comes to payment, there has been some delays. Uh, but the parties agreed that due to the agency of the moment, they will continue to supply ahead of an arrangement that the minister had made uh, to make sure that as soon as possible, their payments are being made so that they have the capacity and the market. The, what the challenge we have is that there's been delays in payments. If it's, I mean, I don't, I don't is, is it that there's no money? Is it that there's no I, money I, to... I, I, I don't work with the Minister of Finance. I'm unable to speak to that effect. What the challenge now is that it is a public knowledge that there's been delay when it comes to the payment of supply. But the most important thing is that those, even though there is delay, it has not affected the supplies of food to the schools, except to say that... Uh, Schools have given caution on the potential strategy. Mm. So within the interim, I can say a lot of schools have food. Of course, I mean, there are some food items that uh, generally schools may not have. So if you look at Bapa Store, for instance, there are 17 food items. It is possible that a school may be lacking one or two food items out of the 17. And so such a school may, may give a caution. It is also possible that the quantity of supply that a school has Within the, the following days or the following week, it is possible that it's going to finish if there is no supply. And so it is very natural for such a school to give the costing. Mm. Now, as government prepares to engage labor unions tomorrow on the 20% cost of living allowances, uh, more labor unions are joining the fray. The leadership of the National Association of Registered Midwives, Ghana, say the current economic situation is squeezing their members. The national president of the National Association of Registered Midwives, Mario Fosu, is urging the government to pay the cola to all employees in the public sector immediately. Apart from us being individuals going to the market and we know how the market is like now, when you come to the workplace, our setup, we always advocate for uh, 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 things that we can't work with. When you come to the workplace, midwives, we deal with human fluids, blood and other issues. So we need to get things that we can work with. But if the economy is very hard, like we are in now, the situation that all of us know that we can't we can't even go to the market that is what is happening at the system that we are also dealing with mm. you go to some hospital facilities you not even get a, a a glass to wear with as i said earlier on we are dealing with human bodies human fluids so if you can't get gloves to work with how are you going to attend to your clients who will come to you mm. last year we accepted the four percent this year seven percent we, did, we didn't complain. So now the government should also complain. You should also listen to us. We are not dealing with anything below 20%. Now, on the probe last night, a number of labor unions expressed their concern on how difficult it was for public sector workers to keep their heads up in these high and difficult times. The, in spite of the appeal from the president for the striking teachers to return to the classroom, it appears that the call will not be heeded. The gender dex coordinator of NAGRA, Rebecca Okran uh, Abedu, explains why. Strike. We have not called off the strike. Um, we are happy that we've been invited for a discussion on Tuesday. We are hopeful that we'll have something tangible to send to our rank and file so that we can uh, call off the strike. We have not called off the strike. We are still on strike. We just didn't arrive at this position. You know, we went through a lot of uh, discussions from the leadership. You know, leadership of unions start from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back to the same uh, uh, grassroots leadership before we can call it off. So 
We have heard His Excellency, but we need to consult our rank and file. The issue about examinations, it's not only uh, this time. We've been writing examinations. Any time, any point in time, we have one examination or the other. We have made our demands clear that uh, we expect a cushioning of about 20%. You know, inflation figures, as the official ones are given us, 28%. For me, the, the way I feel in my pocket is more than 28%. When you, you take the item, item, food items especially, MFR, we are women, and you know it's more than 28%. Mm. When you go to the market, the prices, the change in prices is more than 28%. So we expect a minimum of 20%. That's our demand, and we are hopeful that the uh, government will listen to our cry and then do do the needful so that we can help the kids prepare for the examination. Same with an appeal. Mm -hmm. that, that's a non-starter. That's a non-starter because uh, remember, as my colleagues rightly said, we started drumming about this long time ago, since February. We've written letters on May Day. The Secretary General of TUC spoke about it. And even after us, we have made attempts. We've shown a lot of goodwill over the period. And the sacrifices we have made to, put, uh, to push government's agenda in the educational sector, I think we, did, we deserve this 20%. It's the least that we can demand for. Now, Ghana security agencies are on red alert following increased terrorism attacks on neighboring countries and other West African coastal states in the last 48 hours. Seven children have reportedly died with several others injured after a bomb explosion in neighboring Togo last Saturday. Authorities say an investigation is ongoing to determine the circumstances of an explosion and identify the perpetrators. A statement issued by the Ghana Immigration Service says stringent measures have been put in place uh, at all entry points to Ghana. This development comes after 60 Boko Haram jihadists escaped during an attack on a Nigerian prison. Let's go to Zoom now and speak to a member of the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament, Peter Tobu. Thank you very much, sir, for your time here on Join Us Prime. So given the situation, we have the uh, immigration service on the alert uh, in order to be able to arrest these people. Uh, what do you think is the best possible way to ensure that these escapees uh, do not enter Ghana? And if indeed they are, that we're able to get them. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Let me say good evening to our cherished viewers. Um, Security issues are very serious matters, and that is why on many occasions we say security is a collective responsibility. Insecurity in Nigeria, as far as we look at it, is a concern for the peace and security of this country, Ghana. What happened in Nigeria, jailbreak everywhere is a threat to national security. Because the people who are in jail are supposed to be kept away for society to remain peaceful. So when they succeed in breaking out, they bring back that threat that we have experienced before the arrest. Whatever it is, we have to understand that from Abuja to Accra is not a far distance. Within 24 hours, if you intend to come to Accra from Abuja, you will be here. So Ghana is actually a target with all these people who have broken out of jail. And everything we can do as a nation is to assist our brothers and sisters in Nigeria to be able to curb this menace. Because if they get in here, we are not as safe as they are. Mm -hmm. So whatever Ghana must do, one, we should activate our intelligence network. National intelligence must be up and doing. And I'm so happy that on the 24th of May, 2022, the National Security Ministry launched a program we call See Something, Say Something. If that program is active enough, this is a time that we need it most, that we should begin to get together as a nation. Intelligence agencies must get together as, as, as people who are responsible for the security of this nation. And collectively, let's see whether we can fish them out and get them arrested. Mm. Or we can even prevent them from getting into the country. But preventing them, I'm sure that if anybody coming from Nigeria intends to enter Ghana, after 24 hours, it will be too late to prevent. What we ought to be doing now is be able to fish out to see if they are in here, can we get them arrested? Well, there have been the suggestion of publishing the names of at least the 60 jihadists who were in that, uh, you know, prison uh, who broke uh, or who escaped during the attack on the prison in Abuja. Uh, there have been the suggestion to put the names out so that the public could join in the alertness. Uh, as a former police, senior police officer yourself, what do you make of that suggestion? 
I think that is a good move. It's a good move to get citizens involved in this intel, in, in, intel building because this is not the Ghana Immigration Service matter alone. It's not a matter for the Ghana Police Service alone. It's not just a matter for the National Investigations or Intelligence Bureau. It is a matter for all of us. But mm. those who are paid to do the job must show the way and provide leadership so that all of us collectively will ensure that this country, Ghana, remains safe. You because are on insecurity the... Insecurity in Abuja. The... Insecurity in Abuja is a threat to the peace and security of Accra. You're on the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament. You mentioned the See Something, Say Something campaign. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering if you have briefing on this uh, campaign, and if you do, does this inspire confidence that we have control over the situation, or at least a plan to deal with this? The, the concept of See Something, Say Something is less than two months old. And we have ambassadors who were appointed. The National Security Minister appeared before the committee and gave a detailed briefing as how See something, say something concept will be able to help us in the fight against terrorism. And for me, as a security person, I believe that is a good step, but it is too early for us to be able to appraise the effectiveness of this whole concept. Let's give them time, but let's all come together as a nation to ensure that whatever threatens our peace and security, we must fight it together. Thank you very much. That's Peter Tobu. He's a member of parliament and uh, he's on the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament, also a senior, uh, former senior police officer. You're watching Join Us Prime with me, Ernest Mini. We're taking a break. When we return, we'll bring you some more stories. Please don't go away. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Now, our people deserve no less than economic prosperity. These are the words of President Ekufuado as he opens up on how external economic shocks, including the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war, continue to ravage African economies as he calls for collective efforts at global level to tackle the challenge. The president was speaking in his capacity as the African Union champion of financial institutions uh, addressed the, and he addressed the BOMA of Africa at the invitation of the African Union and Afro champions on the ongoing global economic turmoil. Global system for addressing economic downturns needs repair and fine tuning so that they can be more proactive and equitable, especially for those regions of the world that continue to bear the greatest brunt of these downturns, such as Africa. In the world where conflict in one part of the world immediately disrupts economies far away from the epicenter of the conflict, and when a virus is able to wipe away decades of growth from an economy, we cannot assign responsibility for managing crises to domestic actors alone. We cannot leave small economies exposed to these vagaries of the international system to their fate, insist that they suffer the consequences alone. The international process for supporting such countries has to be fairer and more robust. I share the view of the optimists who say that this is Africa's century. However, I fear that the structural and recurrent flaws of the international economic order will rob us of our prize if we do not work harder to make an impact on its course and character. That is why we must hasten the process of continental integration. Continental unity and collective agency is the only path to building influence to push successfully for the reform of the multilateral economic and financial systems that affect our ability to respond to crises that threaten our rise as a continent. When we think of Africa before our individual countries, we're not just being pan-Africanists, we're being true nationalists, because what makes Africa stronger will make each of our individual countries stronger and more prosperous. It is time for those of us who believe in continental integration to give enthusiastic support to continental decisions and inspire confidence and integrity in the structural organs of the African Union. 
Our people deserve no less. And the dream of prosperity will then be within our grasp. Distinguished participants of the BOMA, I wish you fruitful deliberations. And may God bless Mother Africa and us all. Now, persons living with disability in the Gwan district of the OT region are asking government to expedite action on the release of their component of the district assembly common fund to cushion them in the face of the current economic hardship. The newly created district is yet to receive its 3% payment of the common fund, even though the district has received payment for three quarters from 2021. They want the money released since the vulnerability is getting worse. Peter Senu has details in the following report. Some of them normally call me, oh, you need sister, you need, how are you? Take this 20 cities and buy the food, take this 10 cities and buy fish. And that is how I'm managing now right now. Mm -hmm. But true that if the people, if the people didn't call me say me anything, at times I can stay the whole day without taking food, without taking anything. In actual fact, the hardship of the economy now has uh, made me suffer more than I do. Because even the thick, the wood business that I'm talking about, sometimes we saw wood and send to the market, we have to be roaming with the wood sometimes before we get market. So the market asks at how they will buy it, they will not even buy it like that. Peasants living with various forms of disability, some of whom have children with disabilities, say times are tough for them as the recent high cost of living has had a great impact on them. For some, they spend the little they get as income on transport and medication. Others would have to depend on the generosity of others to survive. Juliana is a mother of a set of twins, with one of them living with a disability. At age six, her daughter cannot walk, neither can she talk, apart from making inaudible sounds which only the mother understands. By this, she cannot leave her under the care of anyone. Juliana cooks and sells food her community, but her daughter's condition is restricting her business now. Even if she makes any income, it is spent on food and toiletries as she changes her daughter's diapers not less than twice a day. Prosper fathers a five-year-old boy with a disability while he also lives with a disability. He says life has been difficult for him after the birth of his son five years ago. Expenditure on medication and toiletries are high on the expenditure list. When the illness happened on him in the infant in the first year that they born him, it made me to spend a lot of money on him. So uh, after some two years, I find it very difficult to get money since I'm a farmer. Uh -huh. And the farming system too is no more uh, improving for us due to the weather uh, changes. So uh, it forced me to enter into this uh, wood business. So sometimes I go search for uh, wood in the bush to buy, and then take chainsaw operators. Sometimes. Uh, we get something from there small, small. Since I have a lot of things on my mind to do to, I mean, help build Ghana, uh, I've started a school from the KG level to class two now. Sometimes I get some small, small coins over there too. 
to cater for the family. Prosper's wife, who cooks and sells, says her business has grounded after the birth of a son. Eunice also lives with a disability. She says life in the face of the rising cost of living is a challenge for her. As a crutch, she had set up collapsed due to her frequent visit to the hospital and non-payment of fees by parents. Right now, I'm, I'm not teaching again because of my work, because I can't stand. So I normally in the house, I just try to manage and feed my children, their accommodation, their food and everything. I have a lot of problem. I find a school on my own. I find a crutch a school on my own. Uh -huh. So I'm a proprietor. So when I fell sick, uh, the, those teachers, those who are taking their children, uh, parents refuse to pay their fees. This is Johnny Spine with me, and Esmini. We're taking a short break on Worry 10. We have business and sports for you. Stay with us. Hello, good evening. Welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwa. Great to be with you tonight. First up, mining giant Angogo Deshanti has launched a program to develop Obwase and adjoining communities over the next 10 years. The move will see the revamping of the local economy and development of infrastructure. The socio-economic development plan aims at contributing to a resilient local economy and the welfare of community members. There's more in this report. Of developments of Obwase and its environs, despite years of active gold mining, has been a subject of public concern. Anglogo Dashanti wants to change the narrative. Its socio-economic development plan is a build-up on a just-ended three-year social management plan. The social management plan, started in 2018, contributed to diversifying the local economy of Obwase by designing and implementing sustainable interventions. The 10-year socio-economic development plan promises contribution to employment and job creation, technology and innovation, gender and social inclusion, and health. Richard Jordanson is the Senior Vice President, AGA Ghana and Tanzania Business Unit. As we launch the 10-year socio-economic development plan, we will continue to pursue strategic relationships with all our stakeholders to build resilient and socio-economic self-sustaining communities through improved social development diversified and sustainable local economy and improved partnerships. We are here to build on the existing partnerships and engage in dialogue that will allow us to implement our 10-year socio-economic plan. Managing Director of the Anglugo Dashanti Obwase Mine, Eric Reko Isubontin, assured of the successful implementation of the project. I am personally encouraged by the progress we have made in demonstrating our genuine commitment to the development of our host communities over the last three years through the social management plan. I'm also hopeful for the future because we have a plan for continuing the good work in a structured and well thought through program through the 10 year socioeconomic development plan. Chief of the Adanse Traditional Council, Opeja Kotre Bonsre Fie II, lauded initiatives and policies implemented by the gold mine since its reopening in 2019. We are pleased with the $2 per gold oins initiative to the Anglo Gold Ashanti Trust Fund. The fund has brought a lot of development to our dance and we hope for more. Ashanti Regional Minister Simon Osemensa reiterated government's commitment to clamping down on the resurgence of the illegal activity. And this means again has raised his ugly head. 
I'm appealing to all these people who are attempting or are even doing the Lanse activities within the concession of Anglogold Ashanti to desist from that. For Joy News, Emmanuel Wright Kweku reporting. Now, a senior finance lecturer at the University of Cape Coast, Seram Kawa, has said that Ghana cannot continue to blame the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine war for the country's economic woes. Speaking on Joy Business Social, he indicated that managers of the economy have not been prudent with the country's resources. Mr. Kawa also advised government to channel the country's resources into productive sectors such as agriculture and industry. We cannot blame the Russia-Ukraine war solely on what we find ourselves in now. Our expenditure as a country is gone very high. Most of the things that are done by government, if you look at it, the cost is high as compared to an individual doing the same thing. I can just give an example of Jata Cement. Look at how much that has been put into the construction of Jata Cement factory. That same amount, is used by an individual, a group of individuals, companies, a private company doing that work. Look at how much we want to put into the construction of the cathedral. That amount that we are going to use for the construction of the cathedral could have been used for the construction of four of Jata cement around the country that will employ a lot of people. So we cannot blame the Russia-Ukraine war solely on that. There are countries like Namibia that got some bailout, just as Ghana has gotten. They have been able to construct hospitals, add to schools, and they did the same things. But in Ghana, what did we find? We have done this, we have done this, and there is nothing tangible to show for it. While well, speaking on the same program, Chairman of the Greater Kwa Regional Chapter of the Association of Ghana Industries, Chunam Akmelo, urged government to implement policies to protect local producers. He says Ghana needs to be bold and implement laws which protect the producers. He cited the example of Nigeria where uh, the ban on the importation of rice has improved uh, production in that country. We're asking is that the policy environment must change to be more friendly to a Ghanaian, not a foreigner. In fact, if you, you follow the, the issue happening in Nigeria now, the Nigeria has just made a promulgated law that prohibits importation of finished rice. So if you're in Nigeria, you can't import rice from Indonesia. So that if you're an investor in New York, you want to go invest in rice production in Africa. You go to Nigeria and you, and you not come to Ghana. You not come to Ghana because there's no law that protects investment of rice in ghana it is cheaper to import finished rice in ghana than to produce but i'll send the same money to nigeria because nigeria is protecting investment of rice production in nigeria that explains why if you realize these days a lot of people are buying the paddy rice and they are sending it to nigeria and my, we are here my, and crying every day that we don't have money but, but for now, so I mean, you, you raise a valid point, but whenever um, um, this point is raised, we ask the question if our local producers will be able to produce to meet the market. Uh, do question. we have the capacity to feed, you know, Ghana, they are going to ban importation of rice, for instance. Do we have the capacity? I recall when President Buhari came out to announce this policy about banning of importation of of, of uh, local rice, uh, of imported rice. A lot of people were asking this question, but he couldn't be bothered. The truth is that you have to start from somewhere. For how long are you going to, to are you going to be self-sufficient in order to pass some of these laws? When this when the policy was first implemented in Nigeria, uh. they had significant challenge because all of a sudden there there became massive shortage of rice. So there was significant shortfall in the market of rice however over time less than two years they were able to catch up and they were producing rice to satisfy the country what we are saying is that we know it's difficult singapore and all of this country we celebrate today did not start easy 
they had to go through the meal it was difficult uh, but you need uh, to sacrifice A final one for us tonight, Ochiame Kwame, the new brand ambassador for estate developer We Lead Company Ghana Limited, has joined calls for more public-private partnership. We seek to develop land in addressing a housing deficit and issues of land guards. This follows a partnership between the company and the Ghana Post uh, to develop over 40 acres of land into houses and apartments with social amenities. Ochiame Kwame disclosed this after he was unveiled and gifted one of the homes as a brand ambassador for Way Lead at Lashibi in Tema. Correspondent Kwame Anka has more. Access to quality and affordable homes or litigation free land continues to remain a dream even for those with financial wherewithal. Under their partnership with Ghana Post, estate developer Way Lead Company Ghana Limited is developing over 40 acres of land which will have townhouses, some detached houses and apartments to accommodate close to 1,000 families. Newly unveiled brand ambassador for the company, Ochame Kwame, has lauded the partnership as he believes this will save many from losing money over multiple sale of land and other risks. The celebrity, who has been in music for over two decades, shares some roles he is expected to play in promoting this project. Another thing that it means is that bringing all the connections I have in the banking and insurance sector to make sure that people who cannot buy at once and put money down can go through a certain mortgage process so that more people can come and live with us. As you can see, the land is big and it is not just these luxury homes. There are also luxury apartments. It's time for all of us to dream. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to dream. Don't be afraid to call Waylead to find out what type of packages we have for you. And I can tell you that even though it is a middle class um, property, everybody can afford one and we have a package for everyone from mid to the apartments to the luxury homes everybody can afford one meanwhile managing director of way lead company ghana limited king and wang is happy such partnerships will help prospective clients acquire affordable homes you see if you live in the uh, uh, far areas you know for your running to your uh, office is a challenge running send, send your children to a school is a challenge so we trying to build at the primary areas and selling to people at the very, very affordable price so if you compare our other competitors around you know just at the same locations our price let's say around 60 percent of the price and also uh, at this price we are able to do a better quality uh, to, 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 to supply to Ghanaians. Ochame Kwame's music career, his hepatitis B campaign with Ghana Health Service, promoting Ghana on the international stage, are among some reasons where lead settled on him. He is moving into this secured environment with his family. And that's uh, business for this holiday. Coming up next is Paul's to stay tuned. Hello, good evening and welcome to the sports segment here on the Joy News Prime with me, Oreko Ampofo. Now ahead of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica, Minister for Youth and Sports Mustafa Yusuf has assured the Black Princesses of maximum support from the government. The team will embark on the European tour before flying out to Costa Rica next month. Yusuf urged the team to put up their best performance because government is behind them. Having watch some of your previous matches for the past three days i've been watching your your matches and i know that you are so 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 poised for action Thank you. and you are going to do well in costa rica there's no doubt just this is a big platform given to you a big opportunity a big platform a big opportunity for you to show what you can do for this great country and do for yourself because also, it's also a platform for you to showcase what you have, your talent. And that may lead you to so many big places and places that you never dream of. So please, 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 please. Government is doing everything, apart from the special package that I'm delivering this evening. We've put in everything 
whether financial logistics to ensure that you have a very fruitful preparation. Other countries have qualified, but the preparation that have, put, have been put together by the FA and government supporting by financing it, they are not going to get that opportunity. But you are going to get that opportunity because we believe in you. We believe that you are going there to make an impact. We believe that you are going there to lift the flag of this country high. And you will never disappoint us. So our prayers are with you as you leave the shores of this country to begin the journey of bringing the, black, uh, the world stage under 20 women champions uh, trophy, World Cup, back. You bring it to Ghana. Uh, that's the note on which you wrap up the sports segment here. In the meantime, if you're after some more sports stories, you can check my Enjoy Online for us last sports, or you can also follow us on social media at Joy Sports GH. And that's our show for tonight. Many thanks for your company. Please log on to myjoinline.com. We have more stories there. Happy Eid to all our Muslim brothers and stay tuned to join us.